Hello everybody, it's Ivan and in this video we are going through most of the corona lights and see how to use them in interior projects. But the best thing is that going through all of them we will end up with a very flexible interior rendering workflow for night scenes. Let's see it. For demonstration purpose I will use a simple bedroom interior with a camera on the right viewport. Let's initiate a viewport rendering. As we don't have any light yet, we cannot see anything. The first step is to open Chaos Cosmos and add a night natural light. Just find an appropriate evening HDRI, download if necessary and click import. The natural night lighting has now been established as a base and we can start adding artificial lights. Don't worry if it's too bright. We will see how to control it later. With the right click, stop the render and then choose the camera. Let's take a look at the ceiling spotlights. The disc light is a great choice for ceiling spot lamps. In our case we are going to place the disc lights into these lamps for the main artificial light. To create one, navigate to the create panel and choose lights, corona lights. From the shape drop down menu, choose disc light and hold and drag to specify the radius. I will rename it to be able to find it easily later on in the light mix. Ok, now we need to move it to the right place and fix the radius to fit. If we want to be precise we can just type it. Next, we need to copy that light into all of the ceiling lamps. To make my life easier, I will use the light selection mode which means that I will be able to select lights only. When copying, use the instance option. Thus, we will be able to control them simultaneously. Start the interactive render and be sure that the camera viewport is selected. The first thing I can notice is that the lamps do not affect the interior enough. To make them more noticeable, we can increase the intensity. I will start with 300 and ok maybe even more. With 900 it looks better. Ok. Now the space looks appropriately lit, but we need to take care of the color that is white by default. If we want to add an RGB color, red or magenta for example, we can use the direct input. But usually that's not the case for interiors. When we buy light bulbs from the shop, the color is written on them in kelvins. Here we can see that in real life, lower values means warm light and higher values Cooler. In Corona Render the pure white is set to be 6500 kelvins which represents the daylighting white. Let's type something like 2500 kelvins. This is too yellowish for my taste so I will make it 3500. Ok, it looks fine and we have some core contrast. Bluish light outside and warm inside. Something a lot of people want to see when it comes to night renders. Later on, we will see how to increase that effect even more. The rectangle lights are a great choice if we want to simulate softbox lights since we can control the directionality. Besides that, they're fantastic for LED strips and hidden lighting. Let's create one but this time from the Corona toolbar. Click on the bulb symbol and then from the shape drop down menu select rectangle. We are going to simulate a hidden LED strip above the bed so we need to create one and place it. Again hold and drag in the viewport. Move it to the desired place and rename it. The intensity from the previous light will be used but it will be too high for that lamp. Let's reduce it to something like 20. Also, for these lights, I would like to reduce the kelvins and make it warmer. Another thing we could change here is the directionality, but I will leave it by default. Lumixi, is there something else we need to know about the disc and the rectangle light? Well, what if we want to have more focused light rays, like for a stage? 
With the directional parameter, we can easily make the light rays more focused and have a more dramatic effect. Zero means equally spread, while one focused. Let's take a look at the target parameter, it will help us point the light in the direction we want. Also, we can choose to emit light on both of the source sides. Few important parameters are left. In case you don't want to see the light source, you can disable visible directly. Pay attention that the reflection of the shape is still there. To remove it, disable visible and reflections. Also, if you are looking through a glass, like from outside, we'll still see the light source, so you can disable that as well. Remember, these are needed if you do not want to see the light source. Then we can choose not to affect the caustics or to include other lights. Back to the project, the next light we're going to create is for the table one. Here, I would like to make a light that will spread in absolutely all directions equally. To do that, I will choose a sphere shape. Again, just click on the viewport, hold and drag to specify the radius of the sphere. Now, we can see the light in the viewport appearing as a sphere. This is a great light source for a lot of cases, from light bulb representations to table lamps and many more. Let's place it inside the lamp and rename it. You notice that the settings for each of the lights are very similar, so the first thing to adjust will be the intensity parameter. Actually, I don't have to change anything else here. The next light we are going to see is one of the most desired when it comes to interiors, the IS light. Basically, the IS data format describes the distribution of light from a point source. Most major manufacturers of lights provide IS profiles, which can be downloaded for free. To create one, I will copy the sphere light, but this time as a copy, since we are going to change it. Move it close to the wall in order to be able to clearly see the profile. Ok, rename it. Now, if we scroll down, we will see an IS option. Click on the known and the window with the Corona IS profiles will pop up. I will choose the first one. Keep in mind that you can download additional IS profiles from the web, but I think that the provided will do a great job. Ok, great, the profile is clearly visible. Just need to move it to the desired place. First. Let's see how to control the size of the profile. This is actually very easy. Reduce the radius of the sphere to make it smaller or increase it to be bigger. Probably with a radius of 4, the profile will be the right size, still this is up to our personal taste. Finally, let's reduce the intensity of the light. I will copy that guy above the second painting and we are ready to render. I will stop the interactive viewport rendering with a right click and with a second right click choose the camera. Then open the render settings and click on the scene tab, set up light mix. Choose the instant set lights option. Thus, when we want to change something on the ceiling lamps for example, we will manipulate all of them at once, click generate, double check the resolution and render. After some time when the quality is enough for my needs, I will stop the render. First, check if we need to change something on the tone mapping. I will slightly reduce the white balance to make the image slightly more bullish, maybe add some boom and glare since we have artificial lights. Play with the parameters till we like it and go to the light mix. As we can see, all types of lights we created are listed here. This was actually the reason to rename all of the lights properly. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I will increase the warm cold core contrast by bringing more bluish core from the environment. This is more like an artistic approach that I actually really like. From here, we can also enable or disable different lights 
as well as fine-tune their intensity. Ok guys, that was all for that video. No doubt we did not cover the cylinder light, because honestly I don't see a lot of cases to use it. Now we know how to use artificial lights in Corona for interior renderings. If you want to see more Corona content, check out my other videos and stay tuned for the next one.